Hey, what's up you guys? Josh here with the MC Recon channel. And today I've got a quick unboxing and setup of this Condor PS1500. It's a great way to store or transport your bike and it adjusts to fit many different wheel sizes. And there it is, pretty much already assembled. Pull this out. Let some of this stuff drop to the floor. And last thing that's in here, it's just some instructions, so let's get this out of the way. Very heavy duty. And some more instructions here. I can't seem to get this out right there, so I'm going to remove this cotter pin, take this pin out, and lift that up right there. Okay. It's kind of odd that it would be partially put together like this just to have to take it off <laughs> to remove the plastic, but that's all right. Really nicely powder coated. I actually really love that this is put together with just cotter pins. Really strong, but without the hassle of a bunch of nuts and bolts. Here we've got this back piece. Looks like the majority of the construction is aluminum with some rubber pieces here and then steel where it really matters. So this connects right back here. And there's a couple, <clears throat> a couple screws in here where we can drive these in. Now, if you wanted to, you could put some Loctite on this if you want to keep that permanently attached or leave it without Loctite. That way you can take it back apart, but I'm going to put some Loctite on it. Now, in order to tighten that down fully, I'm going to take this pin back out. Okay, that ain't going nowhere. And that needed to be removed anyway, so I could put this back on. So we'll set that in place and insert so this pin back here and now we'll run this through the back So now if you wanted to collapse this down for easy storage, you have to remove this pin and then you can fold that down into place. This have, would have to move out of the way, either slide it back or whatever, but mine's going to be uh, semi-permanent, so we'll just leave it like this. And essentially that's what it looks like, pretty easy setup. So the way that this works is... And I'll show you guys in a second, but essentially you drive the bike up, set the wheel in here, and then it's gonna lift up and into place, and the wheel's gonna sit right up here. And then what I'm gonna do is drill four holes in the trailer so I can drive some bolts through here. Looks like these are countersink, and then put a nut on the back side. And now for our rim size and tire width, we can set which position this should be in. So an important thing is to note, the optimum setting for a specific tire is any setting that allows the cradle to tilt as far forward without making contact with the surface below it. So whenever we load the bike up, we'll check for that. And if it's too close, then we'll need to switch to the other setting. So mine is a 17 inch rim and a 120 width tire. So position three, four, or five. So a pretty big range there. So for now, we'll set it in the middle at four. And then if I need to adjust it after that, I will. All right, so let's try it on the ground first. I'll set it on the ground, set the wheel here, and then I'll lift it up into place and see if the cradle sits in the proper position. So it's 
holding the bike up just fine and sat into place. Let me check underneath. All right, so I need to run to Lowe's, get some bolts for this, drill some holes in the trailer. I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, you guys, so uh, got it in the trailer and just want to show you guys how I have it set up. Now, a lot of these trailers aren't made, you know, perfectly even. As you can see, the front of mine, that center bar there is actually uh, slanted a little bit. So, you know, center it up as best you can. Or, you know, if you're going to do two bikes, you know, you can do one here and one here. Um, but this is what I use. I have a, this is all stainless steel. And this is a three inch lag with a hex top. And then I've got quarter by one fender washer for the top and that's how this goes on and that's a quarter inch hole drilled and the reason I did these instead of something like this flathead with a countersink which would have fit in there nicely a lot of times you know you end up stripping those out if you're not careful so insert that this is a 7 16 get that through the hole and then push the rest of the way then on the underside flat head and then this locking washer or locking nut the only difficult part is whenever you go to do the back because it's so far under there you may need somebody up top here to hold a wrench or you can flip this put the wrench on and rotate it in a way where this is actually going to keep that wrench in place and then drive it from underneath. So that on top, this bigger one on the bottom, just so it grabs more surface area of the wood. So we're not just crushing the wood and then there's the locking nut. So that's what it looks like. Now let me show you the bike being pulled up onto the trailer. All right. So now we're going to get the bike up into the trailer and just a couple tips it's always a good idea to go ahead and hitch up the trailer and pull the parking brake or the e-brake of the vehicle that you're pulling something up into the trailer of so I've done that and now let me go ahead and grab the bike and set this in place the nice thing about this uh, wheel chuck is once i get the bike up into place i can leave it it'll hold the bike up while i go ahead and grab the straps And then I've also uh, left the bike in first gear, so that'll help you know, keep it from moving. It's just another added measure of security. So here I've got these handlebar straps. Um, this company's Pro Taper. So it's got a hook that goes around the handlebars and then hooks to itself, so you're not damaging anything with this hook. And then this is the style that just pulls, um, so it's not ratchet and you don't really have to compress the suspension, um, but I do just a little bit and then here, hook it to the trailer down here. Now that I've got them both on, I'm going to hop up there, press the front suspension just a little bit, and then give this a little bit more of a pull. And then these also come with this Velcro here, so if you wanted to keep this from flapping around in the wind, you can do so just like that. So really... You know, that should be good, just like it is with two straps up front. And you can definitely check it by just giving the bike a shake. And you can see the whole trailer and everything shaking with it. The rear isn't even hopping around. But if it makes you feel a little bit better, you can run a strap uh, basically through the rear wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you guys. And again, this is just to keep it from bouncing around. So we're going through the tire or the rim and giving it just a little bit of tension and then going back around again and so our goal for this isn't to ratchet down really hard just enough to hold it in place okay and then with the excess again we can just wrap this around and this strap as well has velcro 
That ain't going nowhere. All right, you guys, there you have it. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video and it helped you out, be sure to let me know by leaving a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.